consider now the lively examples of the Holy Fathers, in whom shone forth real perfectness and religion, and thou shalt see how little, even as nothing, is all that we do. Ah, what is our life when compared to theirs? They, saints and friends of Christ as they were, served the Lord in hunger and thirst, in cold and nakedness, in labour and weariness, in watchings and fastings, in prayer and holy meditations, in persecutions and much rebuke. Oh, how many and grievous tribulations did the apostles, martyrs, confessors, virgins endure, and all others who would walk in the footsteps of Christ. For they hated their souls in this world, that they might keep them unto life eternal. Oh, how strict and retired a life was that of the Holy Fathers, who dwelt in the desert! What long and grievous temptations they did suffer! How often were they assaulted by the enemy! What frequent and fervid prayers did they offer unto God! What strict fasts did they endure! What fervent zeal and desire after spiritual profit did they manifest! How bravely did they fight that their vices might not gain the mastery! How entirely and steadfastly did they reach after God! By day they laboured, and at night they gave themselves oft times unto prayer, yea, even when they were labouring they ceased not from mental prayer. They spent their whole time profitably. Every hour seemed short for retirement with God, and through the great sweetness of contemplation even the need of bodily refreshment was forgotten. They renounced all riches, dignities, honours, friends, kinsmen, they desired nothing from the world. They ate the bare necessaries of life. They were unwilling to minister to the body even in necessity. Thus they were poor in earthly things, but rich above measure in grace and virtue. Though poor to the outer eye, within they were filled with grace and heavenly benedictions. They were strangers to the world, but unto God they were as kinsmen and friends. They seemed unto themselves as of no reputation, and in the world's eye contemptible. But in the sight of God they were precious and beloved. They stood fast in true humility. They lived in simple obedience. They walked in love and patience and thus they waxed strong in spirit, and obtained great favour before God. To all religious men they were given as an example, and they ought more to provoke us into good livings than the number of the lukewarm tempteth to carelessness of life. Oh, how great was the love of all religious persons at the beginning of this sacred institution! O oh, what devoutness of prayer, what rivalry in holiness, what strict discipline was observed, what reverence and obedience under the rule of the Master showed they in all things. The traces of them that remain until now testify that they were truly holy and perfect men, who fighting so bravely trod the world underfoot. Now, a man is counted great, if only he be not a transgressor, and if he can only endure with patience what he hath undertaken. Oh, the coldness and negligence of our times, that we so quickly decline from the former love, and it is become a weariness to live because of sloth and lukewarmness. May progress in holiness not wholly fall asleep in thee, who many times hast seen so many examples of devout men.